Celebrities may come across as relatable in interviews and on social media, but there's always some way to keep us from losing sight of who they are. Their accomplishments, struggles, and bizarre tales go far beyond what the typical person can handle. Before becoming well-known, Oscar Isaac performed in a number of ska bands, including one that debuted on Green Day. Oscar Isaac played the guitar for bands like Petrified Frogs, Closet Heterosexual Band, and The Worms before he rose to fame as a major motion picture star. The Blinking Underdogs, one of his most popular bands, even performed on Green Day and Mighty, Mighty Boston's. The first woman to ever win a Grammy, BAFTA, Academy, and Golden Globe Award all in one year is Lady Gaga. Gaga reached even greater heights thanks to her performance in 2018's A Star Is Born despite the fact that she was already an a list musician at the time. She won a string of awards at the four biggest award shows of the year, thanks to the film's inescapable hit single, Shallow, which received unending praise. In the 1990s, Tom Hardy created rap music. Tom Hardy is a well-known actor today, appearing in movies like The Revenant, Mad Max, Fury Road, and Inception. Tom Hardy, however, had a different career plan for the 1990s. In 1999, he released an album called Falling on Your Arse under the name Tommy No One. And it's actually not that bad. While filming Creed, Michael B. Jordan was knocked out in the face. Take one for the team, please. Tony Bell hit MBJ hard while filming Creed 2015, knocking him out completely. Nobody ever claimed that making a boxing movie was simple. Michelle Yeoh decided not to work for two years in the 1990s because she had so many offers for stereotypical borderline racist roles. Even though racism is sadly pervasive in Hollywood, hearing about how brutal the industry can be is always perplexing. She claimed that people in the industry couldn't really tell the difference between my Chinese, Japanese, Korean, or even English ancestry. They would speak slowly and loudly. Due to designers' refusal to lend her jewelry for public appearances, Salma Hayek had temporary butterfly tattoos painted on herself for the 1998 VMAs. At the start of her career, Salma Hayek struggled to find designers to dress her for events, so she gladly took matters into her own hands. She tells Vogue, I was wearing a very plain black dress, and I knew the other girls would be wearing gorgeous dresses and jewelry. I thought, I am fabulous. I felt proud of myself after getting some butterfly tattoos on myself while working at American Apparel. Abel Tesfe, now known as The Weeknd, first performed his music in front of an audience. His co-workers were unaware that it was his song. Tesfe admitted to GQ that no one was aware of The Weeknd's appearance at the time his song What You Need was released. I was folding clothes at American Apparel when someone at the store started playing the song thanks to a good friend of mine who helped me land the job. The pronunciation of Ariana Grande's last name differs from what you might expect. Ariana Grande revealed that her grandfather called their family's last name Grande in an interview with Apple Music in 2018, because it sounded more enjoyable. Her brother suggested changing it to Grande. Ariana regrets not using the original pronunciation, but it was obvious that this pronunciation spread. Henry Golding is a fully trained hairstylist. That photo of Henry Golding holding a hairdryer wasn't for show. Before becoming famous for his acting career, the crazy rich Asian star began his career as a hairstylist. Harry Styles made his first solo appearance on the US Vogue cover in 2020. He had previously appeared on the covers of the 1892 Founded magazine, though they were all given the same attention as women. He became the first man in U.S. Vogue history to take on the task entirely by himself during Styles' photo shoot for the December 2020 issue. The first female rapper to ever perform at Yankee Stadium was Nicki Minaj. Nicki Minaj didn't make history until 2010 when she took the stage at the renowned New York Stadium. 
despite the numerous successful female rappers who came before her. Jason Momoa was hired by Baywatch Hawaii after fabricating a model audition story. Momoa was questioned about his modest modeling beginnings during an interview with Square Mile. No, I made that shit up in fact. In response, he said, additionally, he acknowledges meeting managers who made up some stuff for me, such as Hawa Model of the Year. Right? Fake it until you succeed. Dwayne The Rock Johnson had male breast reduction surgery. Dwayne Johnson has always been a sizable individual. He was 6.4 feet tall and by the time he was 15 years old had a mustache. He had self-esteem problems brought on by gynecomastia, also known as man boobs, despite always standing out from his peers. He underwent breast reduction surgery as a result. About once a day, Zendaya watches Harry Potter. Zendaya explained that she uses Harry Potter as a form of self-care in an interview with InStyle in 2019. She advised against coming over to my house if she didn't want to watch it because it would be broadcast. For a high school statistics project, Timothy Chalamet used the rap persona Lil Timmy Tim from his youth. Lil Timmy Tim made a rap video about statistics for his favorite teacher as opposed to doing his homework as an ordinary student would. Although it wasn't his most memorable experience, receiving an Academy Award probably makes up for it. Jennifer Lawrence did not complete her middle school education, so she is without a GAD or diploma. Lawrence describes herself as being self-educated. At the age of 14, she quit school to pursue a career in acting. It's safe to say that her audacious move was surprisingly worthwhile. At the age of 20, Bill Murray was detained for attempting to board a plane while carrying 10 pounds of marijuana. He was given five years of probation because he was a first-time offender and was spared jail time despite the fact that the amount of marijuana was worth $20,000 at the time. Near the conclusion of the film, what's love got to do with it? Tina Turner, who worked much more quickly than the director, styled Angela Bassett. In 2022, Bassett confirmed that Turner disregarded all of the crew members' offers of assistance and that the hired stylist for the movie would have finished Bassett's look in less than a quarter of that time. Do you enjoy taking time off from work on Saturdays and Sundays? The idea of the weekend as we know it was created by Sir Ian McKellen's great-great-grandfather. The weekend may have been Sir McKellen's better contribution to the franchises than some of the most well-known ones ever in X-Men and The Lord of the Rings. McKellen discovered that Lois, who won a battle for workers' rights that allowed employees to take Saturday afternoons off, became the grandfather of the modern weekend during an episode of Who Do You Think You Are?